A Labour amendment seeking to remove the controversial EU withdrawal bill's restrictions on the ability of devolved governments to legislate has, was defeated last night in the House of Commons, reacting to the 321 to 297 vote loss we heard from Labour MP Leslie Laird. There was an absolute amendment on the table last night that all parties could have voted for. But the Tories, the Scottish Tories, chose not to do that. Well, the bill will get its third reading today before passing to the Lords. It's now at that stage the UK government plans to amend Clause 11 of the bill, dealing with the devolution of the powers returned from Brussels. Well, joining us now from London is the SNP's Europe and Foreign Affairs spokesperson at Westminster, Stephen Gethins, and the Scottish Conservative MP, John Lamont. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, John Lamont, why couldn't you support this amendment from Labour and supported by the SNP? Well, the negotiations are still going on between the um, Scottish Government and the UK Government. I think there's an acceptance by both sides that progress has been made and continues to be made, but agreement has not yet been, been reached. So to rush through an amendment last night which didn't reflect um, the final agreement would have been would have been daft. I think it's right for us to, to get the right deal um, for Scotland, get the right deal for the um, United Kingdom um, and ensure that when the bill is, is amended, it's amended in a way that reflects the deal which is reached ultimately between the Scottish Government and the UK Government. But it wouldn't be rushed, would it? Because initially David Mundell said that he would have brought forward an amendment by now. But the negotiations are still going on, so it would be rushed until, until the agreement so you're saying is reached. So you're saying that's in, the reason that the amendment has not been brought forward because it, it, agreement hasn't been reached? Well, the negotiations are still ongoing. I thought um, it was about Damien Green. I thought it was about it, it, Christmas it, it, getting well, in the way. That's part of it as well, but the negotiations are still going on between the Scottish Government and the UK Government as to um, the settlement between the Scottish Parliament and the Westminster Mr. Mr. Parliament. We need to ensure that that deal um, is the correct deal, not just for Scotland, but for the whole of the United Kingdom after we leave the European Union. Stephen Gethins, did you jump the gun in backing this Labour amendment then? Absolutely not. Well, I couldn't jump the gun because the, 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 the bill leaves Parliament, bill le leaves the House of Commons tonight. So it's the last opportunity that we've got to discuss and debate this. Now, John, I'm afraid, is, 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 you know, is trying to make excuses here for the fact that this leaves the Commons after we were promised that we could discuss this tonight. So it goes out, if you like, of the democratic part of the House of Commons, goes off to um, those who are there by accident of birth or political appointment over in the House of Lords. And John talks about negotiations. Now, the Scottish government and the Welsh government, you know, working with um, parties from across the House, we put down our amendments back in October. Um, and we got cross-party support for those amendments. We haven't seen any amendments from David Mundell or from the Conservatives yet, and I don't know how it's possible to have a negotiation over these amendments if we haven't seen them and if they're not letting us see them. So to talk about trying to reach agreement when they're not actually showing us anything or reacting to the, the amendments that we've put down that were drafted by officials and have got support from the Liberal Democrats, Labour, the Greens and the SNP, I think is um, being a bit misleading. It's chaos and confusion, and the Tories are trying to tell us this is all part of some plan. Well, the plan is not to give the Democrat elected part of the House a say on this. Is it right, John Lamont, that Michelle Moan, that bishops from the Church of England should be deciding on this rather than you and Stephen Gethins and other democratically elected MPs from Scotland? That's a separate um, discussion. Well, it's well, not that's a question, the, but that's the question the I'm house, asking the you at the moment. The, the House of Lords. The, the, the question is whether um, the, the, the amendment um, or the bill, when it is amended, reflects what is finally agreed between the Scottish Government and the UK Government. But and is it right that it's the Lords who decide that, that, rather that, that, that than is, democratically that, 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 elected that, that, MPs, John Lamont? It, it is imperative that that amendment reflects the um, wishes of the Scottish Government and the UK Government once they ultimately agree the um, position. But we haven't now, seen the amendment. in terms of... In terms, now, None of us are part of the negotiation. Steve is not part of this negotiation. Sure, but the it Scottish is, it is Government... Between, it is between the two governments. Now, so, the, the House Gary, of Lords, can I come in the House, the House of Lords remains part of our um, legislative process. There's a debate to be had. Perhaps some would argue about the, the competency of the, 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 the House of Lords in terms of legislating. That's a separate point. You it have no concerns. Of, Just to be clear, it, you have it, no it, concerns it about that happening. The House of Lords remains part of our legislative process. I'm more concerned about ensuring that Scotland's place within the United Kingdom is protected, the integrity of the UK single market is protected, and we get the best deal for Scotland and the best deal for the okay, United Stephen Kingdom. Okay, Stephen Gethins, that, that, yeah, that means, I can that come that in on this. Means, I think John, 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 John's being a bit that misleading that here. If the amendment comes to the House of Lords, so be it. Well, wait, wait a minute. I mean, John's talking about this as a negotiation between the Scottish Government and the UK Government, you know, as if it's absolutely no point having any Scottish Conservative MPs down, because Scottish Conservative MPs have 
said this bill is not fit for purpose, and yet, loyally, trooped into the lobbies to vote for something they don't think is fit for purpose. I don't think that's why we're here. Secondly, he talks about a negotiation well, well, just, between just the on that point, well, hold on, Gary, no, can I finish point. the point? No, and this, this is important. No, this is really important. No, look, and, and no, just one second. Let me just make this point to you. Let me make this point to you. How often have you voted against your party? How often have backbench SNP members at Holyrood rebelled well, against the government? You see, luckily, I talk to my government, and we also are down here, we vote as, 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 as we see fit. I've never voted on a bill that I said was not fit for purpose and then voted for it. Now, he also talks about negotiations between the Scottish government and the UK government. Now, the House of Lords is going to have more say over this than the elected Scottish Parliament or the House of Commons because they have not even shown us the amendments. Now, if the Scottish government haven't seen the amendments, and we've produced our amendments, how can you possibly negotiate? I don't understand that they've had months in fact they've had a so, year and a half to produce these amendments and yet so, Scottish Conservatives are voting for a bill that they don't think is fit for purpose well, John, and I'm not sure that's why we're John, here. John Stephen. Lamont just on that point Stephen Kerr your colleague the Conservative mm. MP for Stirling was angry in the Commons yesterday mm. he felt that the government had been taking him and you I presume for granted mm. in promising these amendments which then have not been delivered. Are you angry? I spoke, Are you angry I, I, too? I, I spoke in the debate before Christmas, and I argued for Clause 11 to be amended too. Most of my colleagues, all, all, all of my Scottish colleagues, argued um, for Clause 11 um, to be amended. So, but do you share his came, anger but, at but, the and frustration Gary, at the delay me, in this? Gary, with a good respect, let me finish my point. So last night's amendment was not about the bill. The amendment put forward by Labour was not the right amendment because it doesn't reflect well, the, why didn't you the put stage the right by amendment? which... But the negotiations are, are still going on, Stephen. And what you want but, to but this to is beyond is, the House is, of Commons is rush, now. ...is rush that process... You've had a year and a half. ...which would damage Scotland's place within the United Kingdom, which damaged the United Kingdom, and would not reflect well, the best... Well, let me just... Know, the hang on a second, gentlemen, Gary, gentlemen, 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 just one at a time, because otherwise people will not okay. be able to hear you. Gary, this is important. I've put down amendments in cooperation with other members of Parliament from other parties and from other parts of the United Kingdom. That's what we do as parliamentarians. If the Scottish Conservatives were unhappy with this, they could have put down amendments, and they've had months to put down amendments. There was no reason why they couldn't have amended... If they didn't like the amendment that I put down, which would have been fair enough, that's part of being a parliamentarian, they could have amended that amendment or come to me, and we reached out to all parties and amended it. Are now, the Liberal the Democrats, Stephen? the Labour Party... Are you part of the, the negotiations, well, Liberal Stephen? Democrats, the Labour Party... Um, all managed to do so, and we managed to negotiate with each other. The Scottish Conservatives did not. But, now, the Scottish Government haven't seen these amendments. Now, but, John's trying to hide behind this. Why didn't you put down I'm, an amendment, I'm, I'm John? Not, I'm not trying to hide behind it. The key point of what Stephen... Why didn't you put down an well, amendment? Well, let him answer what, Stephen Gethins. The key point of what Stephen has just said is none of the people involved in putting forward last night's amendment are involved in the, in the negotiations between the Scottish Government and the UK Government as to the best deal for Scotland after we leave the European Union. Well, what's the so point was, in bringing it, it to it, the Commons? Okay. put forward without full knowledge as to how the negotiations are progressing between the, UT, the between the two governments of Scotland. It would be, m make much more sense to wait until there's an agreed position between the two governments and then for the amendment to, bring, to come forward. Then I suspect we'll get cross-party support from all but, parts but of the Just a very final point, Stephen Gethins. Just a very final point, Stephen Gethins. You, you're yep. bringing forward uh, an, another amendment today, is that right? On yeah, the competency so of this, just very briefly. So look, this is important. The House of Commons doesn't have any say in this after today, so we don't think it should progress and if, taking John's point, if there hasn't been progress in the negotiations, then let's put a stop to the youth withdrawal bill at the moment ah, and then let's wait ah, until these, well, these, now, these now negotiations have gone the forward. The problem. Well, it's if the politics the, of grievance SNP well, no, in here. Gentlemen, gentlemen, if the gentlemen I'm right. afraid I'm going to have to stop <laughs> both of you there. We've had a good go at this and no doubt we will have plenty of opportunities to discuss it again. But let me thank you both very much indeed for speaking to us this morning. That's the SNP Stephen Gethins and the Conservatives John Lamont.